Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janel Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Government rolls out a $10 million assistance package to victims of Hurricane Elsa. The Department of Agriculture launches new web portal as part of rebranding efforts. And the Castries Constituencies Council has secured a temporary relocation for vendors. The Cabinet of Ministers has reviewed the report on the preliminary damage assessment following Hurricane Elsa and has approved an emergency assistance package to provide immediate relief to the various sectors affected. The agriculture industry was most impacted with banana and plantain farmers sustaining heavy losses. Crop loss is estimated at some $34 million. 500 homes were damaged with 50 completely destroyed. The CDC buildings in Castries were also impacted. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney at a news conference Friday 9th July informed that the government was realigning funds from the budget to provide assistance and had also applied to the National Economic Fund to finance the relief package. $10 million has been received. $5 million will go towards agriculture. $3 million allocated to the Ministry of Equity, which will be dispersed through the SSDF. 1 million for repairs to the CDC buildings and 1 million for road repairs and cleanup. The CIP program, the first couple of years, the monies were going into the consolidated fund. And it's important to know that once it went into the consolidated fund, there was a proper record and accounting of how those monies were used. Now that it's going into a separate fund and it's being managed by a separate board, um, and there is clear rules as to what we can use um, the monies for or apply the monies to. Um, it's not everything that government would like to do that the fund can uh, provide assistance to. So one of the first initiatives that we had was the problem that we were having with Winfresh when Winfresh was collapsing and funds were lent to the Ministry of, of uh, or to the Department of, of Invest in Lucia to assist in salvaging um, the assets of Winfresh and to keep the market open with Winfresh. And now uh, m those monies are being applied to the restructuring of the FTO. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, informed that affected farmers will receive financial assistance for labor. This will target some 2,487 acres of farmlands. Farmers will also receive free inputs, fertilizers, oil and fungicide. Minister Joseph indicated that farms with windbreaks were not severely impacted by the gusts from Hurricane Elsa and the ministry will be expanding its resilience program across the sector. We have made an allocation for um, building resilience to the tune of $47,000 and that will be to provide farmers with um, planting material, tree crops that they can plant along the, the boundaries to, to prov provide that safety net um, whenever we have been experiencing heavy winds. Our vegetable farmers got damaged too. Unfortunately, the, mostly it was the infrastructure and the infrastructure I referred to had really got severely damaged were a number of greenhouses. The figures is showing that um, over 100 greenhouses got affected and we have agreed that to provide an allocation both to repair um, the greenhouse and to assist our vegetable farmers who are severely affected. Unfortunately, some of our livestock farmers got severely da damaged. Um, well, not they got damaged, but the, the, the infrastructure got damaged as far as the buildings, the pens, and in some cases, some of them lost animals. And what we have agreed is to provide an allocation of $300,000 where we shall be providing support to our livestock farmers um, that experience damage during the passage of the storm. We think it's opportune because like we all know, we are early in the hurricane season. And whilst we did not um, realize heavy rainfalls, but um, whatever we are doing, we think there's need for us to um, create an environment that we can see the free flow of, of water. And in, in that case, um, we are going to um, support the, uh, our farmers, especially those in the low-lying areas and their heavy um, drainage areas. We are going to supply, support them with um, drainage assistance. 
I will see most farmers um, got affected, our um, fishermen got affected, our fisher folks got affected, and support will be given to them. In closing, the other area we're looking at seriously is the question of assisting those banana farmers who have not been paid for about eight weeks. And an allocation has been made for to pay them at least out of the eight weeks to pay for, for five weeks. Um, and the other three weeks will be paid when we, like you heard the Prime Minister spoke about re, uh, supporting restructuring the NFTO. So the balance of the outstanding payments will be made after we have restructured the NFTO. And I can say here um, that we, even before the storm, we had gotten an, uh, an allocation of $4.2 million through the support of the, the Honorable Prime Minister and the Ministry of Finance to assist us in in a restructuring the NFTO. So that, again, is an allocation that will be used during the recovery pr period for our banana farmers. Meanwhile, Minister for Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, Honorable Leonard Montout, assured individuals whose homes were affected that government was moving swiftly to assist them. The 50 households that I mentioned that were completely damaged will provide assistance to the tune of up to $15,000 which will amount to some $750,000 to do the repairs that is needed. And the estimated 450 households that suffered damage to their roofs will receive between a range of $1,500 to $7,500. And that will work out to be an estimated $2.25 million. And so, I ask that our people out there who have suffered damage, it's, yeah, it's a few days already, just be a little patient. We are rolling out this program as quickly as possible. We understand your plight. We recognize the need for the assistance. And we did all that we could to receive the funding as soon as we can. And we will waste no time in ensuring that we reach you in, to, in, in executing and implementing the relief that is needed on your part. A number of households and individuals have already received assistance under the Hurricane Elsa relief package and on Monday 12 July all affected sectors will begin to receive aid. The Ministry of Health and Wellness welcomes the partnership with pharmacies to make COVID-19 vaccines available to the public free of charge. More in this report from Funnel Neptune. The People's Discount Pharmacy Limited recently commenced its new initiative with the Ministry of Health to ensure access of COVID-19 vaccines to its clients. National Immunization Manager Tekla Jabatis applauded the initiative and says this provides a great opportunity for people to access vaccines in a comfortable environment. This is really a partnership between the Ministry of Health and People's Discount Pharmacy. For us at the Ministry of Health and also the owner of People's Discount Pharmacy, it is important that vaccines become available and accessible to our population. For them, it is about people accessing vaccines in a familiar environment, one that where they always come to to access other medications. For us, we think it is a brilliant idea. We always welcome those public private partnership we think it is an excellent avenue to reach out to the people order of people's discount pharmacy limited rosemary michelle says she is pleased that pharmacies can play a great part in healthcare and encourages people to get vaccinated but i want to say from a pharmacist's point of view all medications have side effects the simple aspirin that people take to save their lives can create a lot of problems right? Other, otherwise right? so we are encouraging people it is important take the vaccine it's not only for you it's for your family because you can pick up something out there and take it home and so we encourage people take the vaccine it is going to help solve the kind of problems that we are experiencing now the COVID-19 vaccination drive at the People's Discount Pharmacy Limited will take place every Thursday at the St. Louis Street branch from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The Ministry of Health encourages other pharmacies around the island to come on board and make vaccines available to the public. 
Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, continues to advocate for equitable access to vaccines across the globe. 1.1 million new COVID-19 cases were recorded in the Americas this week, a small decline when compared to the previous week. While mortality has also been reduced in this period, the Americas is still reporting over half of the deaths registered globally. A clear sign, according to PAHO Director Dr. Carissa Etienne, that the toll of the pandemic continues to devastate families and communities, even as parts of the region are experiencing some relief. She noted that while cases in some areas are declining, cases in other parts of the region are rising. In the Caribbean, Cuba is reporting the highest number of new cases per week since the beginning of the pandemic. And Trinidad and Tobago is facing increased mortality due to COVID-19. The diversity and inequity of our region continues to be reflected not only in the trends of the pandemic, but also on how countries are able to access vaccines. There is progress in vaccinations in the Americas, but alas, not for all. One in four people in our region have been fully immunized and over 600 million doses have been administered in the Americas. However, over half of these doses have been applied in just one country, the United States. More developed countries have come to the aid of poorer countries donating COVID-19 vaccines. PAHO commended these countries, which include the United States of America and Mexico, to name a few. Dr. Etienne noted that regional solidarity is required to successfully fight the COVID-19 pandemic. PAHO, she assured, is playing its part in that fight. Our countries know how to deploy vaccines and are ready, but they need more doses and they need them now. And that's why PAHO has urged nations with enough vaccines to share them with countries in the Americas that are still struggling. And that call is starting to resonate. This week, El Salvador welcomed 1.5 million new vaccine doses from the United States government through the COVAX facility as part of the pledge to share at least 20 million doses to our region. Others are receiving additional donations of doses bilaterally. Bolivia is due to receive just over 1 million doses this week and other donations are being prepared. PAHO is leading the logistics for the delivery of the COVAX doses. And we've been working with the US government, the COVAX facility and recipient countries to make sure that all requirements are met and that vaccines can quickly and safely arrive at their destinations. Director of PAHO, Dr. Carissa ATN. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives has launched the new Department of Agriculture web portal as part of ongoing rebranding efforts. We get details in this report. In order to better support our nation's farmers and the general public, the Agriculture Ministry recently revamped its website to create a digital experience designed with its stakeholders and customer base in mind. The goal of this redesign is to provide the agricultural community with easily accessible support as they adapt their farming operations to better provide for our nation and the world. The ministry's most recent activities and statistics, as well as information on its state and sector strengths, are all featured on the newly updated website. This includes a web-based version of the ministry's recently launched iFarm app, which provides information on crop production. One of the main goals of rebranding, according to the Permanent Secretary of the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Barrymore Felicia, is to appeal to the younger population. We saw with the old website, the colors and the depiction, they were not in line with the colors internationally known to be attributed to agriculture. So we came back with the colors 
you will see green and yellow featured, which are the prominent agriculture colors internationally. So our website was more in line with what is known internationally and the global standard. And also the content on the website, it features more heavily centered around the various departments, the service and product offering, and the, the content needed for persons who are engaging agriculture. Content such as the technology packs, which would feature on the website. Other information that you would need to help you through things like concessions, videos on our shows, Agriculture on the Move, you'd find that, and of course, linking that to our social media platform. These things were non-existent in the previous version of the website, so we've updated it to make it more attractive and interactive. The improved website, according to the Director of Agriculture Services, Dr. Aurea King-Sinak, will provide efficiency by allowing clients to access a variety of services without having to physically visit the department. In many instances, persons would bring in items and when it's detained, they don't understand why. So on our website, all of these things will be explained. Um, they would have access to conditions for imports and all of those things to make a, doing the ease of doing business a little easier, a little more um, accessible. So it's more or less to ensure that our faces out there and persons understand what we're doing and that they are able to access us at any given time with any questions. To access the Department of Agriculture's new website, one can visit www.doaslu.govt.lc. From the Ministry of Agriculture, this is Amanda Fay Clark reporting. The Castries Constituencies Council has secured the temporary relocation of vendors who will be impacted by demolition works on the marketing board building. Jesse Leos has a report on these and other plans surrounding remaining works on the first phase of the Castries Redevelopment Project. Ahead of the demolition of the old marketing board building in the Castries market, arrangements are being made to temporarily relocate vendors who ply their trade in that immediate vicinity for their safety. This undertaking is the latest work through the Castries Redevelopment Project. Similar to the accommodations made for provisions vendors last year during construction of the state-of-the-art sheltered area, the city is looking to ensure that vendors who will be impacted by this new construction can still earn a living. Castries Mayor Peterson Francis says the vendors have agreed to the location pitched by the city. We have identified a spot for the, the vendors around the marketing board. So as long as we finalize this, I mean, we have, we have, just, have just signed an MOU with the Ministry of Tourism, so that is going quickly, but you know, we in the season that we are in there right now, that we have to put um, people first before project. <laughs> so, but that is on the card. So we are now in consultation with the, with the people that we are going to move them by, if you know the empty spot by Rikai there, we're going to relocate these people temporarily. Okay. To date, the first component of the Castries Redevelopment Project Phase 1 has been completed, now accommodating provisions market vendors in a sheltered area structurally designed to withstand wind speeds up to a Category 5 hurricane with a layout that enables a free flow of traffic. Mayor Francis laments, however, that even with the more comfortable quarters assigned to the vendors, the city still grapples with excessive street vending. You know, while the vendors were vending on the little tarpaulin uh, under the wind and rain and so on. Now we have given them a first, a first class facility. This is the time they want to go out now, go on the road to sell. And that has been a challenge for us. I mean, we have, I mean, and you know these days everything is politics. These are the, 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 the vendors the food, operating the, within the, within the, the, the yes, facility itself. Yeah, yeah, yes, itself. The, the, now they are leaving the facility yes, to go now, out. And, and they have even... Why is that? Why? I don't know why. Now they have become very creative. They are now taking trolleys. Before we, we didn't have trolleys, but now because we have the, the food market, they have people with trolleys on the road selling because um, those who have went back to the sidewalk. But we, we're not tolerating that, so we are, we are, we are trying, but it's a challenge. The next component of phase one of the project will see the construction of a container box park, creating an avenue for micro-enterprising cosmetic shops, cafes, pubs and eateries. Thereafter, the remaining component of phase one will include modifications to the market entrance adjacent to the Castries Harbor, construction of a state-of-the-art food court, high-end air-conditioned 
restaurants, a refurbished craft market, entertainment area, and meat and fish depots. For the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leonce reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayola. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayola. Monsieur Ta, Janelle, Monsieur Madame, Département qui n'est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, ça c'est Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a présenté Nouvelle Aquayola. Présenté Primus Hutchinson. Les cultivateurs, ça veut dire les femmes, et que l'autre monde qui trouvait affecté par ce clone Elsa, car il recevait un grand soulagement. Annoncement ça l'a fait vendredi en centre financier, en prêt de Serafin, côté Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney, ensemble avec le ministre des Affaires agricoles et le ministre des Affaires égalité, te tient une conférence et puis les journalistes pour présenter un rapport à sous décision du cabinet de gouvernement concernant porter assistance pour des gros dommages qui s'est laissé souffrir à résultat de cyclone Elsa. Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a déclaré que pour ces 600 cas qui souffrent dommages, et c'est plusieurs chimères et canals pays qui sont affectés, et plus toujours les cultivateurs d'un oui, les animaux, les pêcheurs, les cultivateurs, si moi aussi, qui ont trouvé un bon soulagement. Et dit que, malgré le gouvernement, pas trouvé de assistance financière aux institutions qui ont souvent aidé de temps sous coup comme ça. Il a annoncé quand même le gouvernement qui a fait available 10 millions de dollars pour supporter pays à ressusciter en bas cyclone Elsa. Le Premier ministre Chasney a annoncé que 5 millions sont allés pour le secteur agricole, 3 millions pour le ministère des Affaires et Égalité et l'agence SSDF pour aider diverses familles, 1 million pour replacer les fêtes de la CDC à Castri et 1 million pour manger les chemins de la canal et les nécessités comme ça. En parlant de ça, le ministre des Affaires agricoles, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, a déclaré que Plusieurs secteurs agricoles pays qui ont trouvé bénéfice de 5 millions de dollars, ça là, comme le Premier ministre l'a déjà dit, selon le ministre agricole, là, tout arrangement est en place pour supporter ces divers secteurs agricoles qui trouvaient dommage. Et ça qui dépend à ce de gré dommage, chaque habitation, et bien pêche et l'autre comme ça. Nous avons ici pour le financial support pour les femmes qui pour aider à um, nettoyer et puis vivre, replanter. Um, Jardin, nous avons des cipo et puis sel, nous avons des cipo et puis huile et puis fongicide pour ça fait figue là. Les femmes qui expérimentent ces difficultés et puis greenhouse, nous avons aussi des cipo pour ces femmes ça pour vivre établi greenhouse. Aussi, les femmes qui ont nourri les animaux qui ont été affectés, qui ont des animaux à croiser et puis des de femmes qui ont des animaux, animaux morts. Le um, ministre a fait des support pour ces femmes pour vivre établir um, les animaux. Yo. Et puis aussi, nous avons fait des support pour marier et puis um, jeunes poules. Um, nous avons nécessaire pour nous nettoyer ces major canaux là Pas canal canaux là en l'air de femmes, mais ces major canaux là Et puis, une allocation de la main a mis en place pour assister pour nettoyer ces major canaux là pour major waterways. Aussi, c'est six mois femmes là qui viennent affecter, puis c'est pêcheurs qui viennent affecter. Um, through le département de pêche, nous avons ici pour, pour ces ce, ce, um, ce monde-là. Vélibles femmes aussi qui viennent ici pour, et puis um, inputs, et puis nous avons aussi by financial support pour vélibles femmes. Le ministre Agricole a aussi annoncé que les cultivateurs figues qui ont trouvé bon support en bas pour l'assistance. 
nous avons payé les um, fameuses 5 semaines et puis um, l'autre 3 semaines, là, là, nous avons restructuré le NFT comme Content Prime Minister. Dit. Nous avons fait une allocation de 4.2 millions de dollars à 20 cyclones. Là. Et puis là, ça, il est là pour assister les fameuses. Nous avons nous attendu que le gouvernement a pris temps pour assister les fameuses figues et puis les fameuses figues de l'échelle là. Ce n'est pas le fameux gouvernement que les fameuses figues de l'échelle là. Je veux dire, nous entrons dans le gouvernement, um, nous jouons ce problème là. Et puis c'est mon qui a parlé actuellement à la radio, à la télévision, c'est eux qui ont des problèmes là. Et puis nous avons nous travaillé avec les ressources pour ranger les problèmes là. C'est divers la famille qui trouvait affectée par Cyclone Elsa, la jani 3 millions de dollars qui est en place pour y trouver assistance. Ministre qui n'a pas responsabilité pour l'égalité, on a bien de tout expliqué en façon de assistance à la caille fait. En 3 millions de dollars, ça là, l'année a pris pour 50 cailles, nous estimons, qui ont trouvé dommagé totalement. Avec ces gens là, nous avons aidé, nous avons aidé, même qui. 15 000 dollars pour assister au pour rebâtir Kayo. Bon, l'autre 450 ces mouna qui ont Kayo dommagé. Um, plusieurs ces mouna ça c'est fait avec Kayo qui dommagé. Nous avons tiré aussi assistance pour ces mouna ça là. Nous avons payé 1500 dollars à jusqu'à 7500 dollars. Avec ça, il est venu sous multiplier ça par 450. On dit, nous avons 5 000 dollars pour chaque caille. Ça, il est venu à 2 millions 250 dollars. So, C'est comme ça que nous avons dépensé 3 millions de dollars pour faire mon assistance parce que nous réalisons que la majorité de ces gens qui ont été dommagés, c'est malheureux. Les gens qui pauvres, avec nous voulons faire assurer nous, nous pour tirer assistance là, nous besoin. Avec nous, nous avons nous nous faire faire assistance là, et nous avons faire ça nous paye pour faire assistance là plus vite que possible. So, pour que nous ma membre SSDF qui a implémenté le programme ça là, qui a visiter nous, avec diverses personnes qui viennent demander des questions, avec, um, nous avons fait un assessment de, à, à ce côté là, avec à présent, nous parlons pour faire un matériel pour faire assurer nous assister au point de caillou. Pour les gens qui ont été la caille voisinage, la caille famille, ça vient en caillou même. Les gens qui font un changement pour vivre en caillou, nous savons que c'est un chèque qui a coulé toujours. Nous avons fait un matériel qui est neuf, qui est bon pour ça régler la situation pour tout le monde vivre en caillou dans une situation qui est normale. Content, ça c'était la voix du ministre de la responsabilité pour faire égalité à cette ici. On doit appeler la minute. Avant ça, um, on doit appeler ministre pour l'agricole, avec la pêche, avec le coopératif. On doit appeler uh, Ezekiel Joseph pour parler à son assistance là, qui a venu pour les femmes, les pêcheurs. Je suis moi, ce monde qui peut être fait avec l'autre assistance comme ça. C'est pour ça que nous avons fait, pour ça, nous avons fait mes programmes là. Je vous remercie autant pour que. Gardez, je vais vous une invitation pour que je ne puisse pas encore dire comment se fait la vie. Je vais vous présenter une nouvelle incroyable. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon fin de semaine et que vous ayez saison cyclone pour prendre toute qualité de précaution qui est nécessaire et aussi pour prendre précaution contre la maladie corona aussi. Après ça, je vais vous présenter au Chanel. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Jalal Novel.